guys, this is Nurse Jet, Nursing the Truth. I hope everyone is having a great Monday. So, I've really had a lot of interesting comments today. Um, I don't really know what's going on with the universe out there or what constellation process we're in. But a lot of things, a lot of questions um, are arising and... Um, I don't know if it's just the negativity um, throughout the internet. I don't know. But, you know, I feel like we should, um, as truth seekers and conscious people, try to come together collectively. And if we work together in a positive nature, I think that we will all help each other grow as individuals. Um. I do know myself, I have listened to a lot of people on YouTube, and I have read tons and tons and tons of books and documents and stories and mythologies and legends. So, to try to get my understanding on things. Now, I really don't know what I'm going to title this video. I guess it's kind of like a hodgepodge of really the New Testament writers. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of information about that because I do know that um, this could have been a problem today. Now, I do know um, reading um, as much as I have in the Catholic Encyclopedia, Catholic Dictionary, Encyclopedia Biblica, um, you know, you really have to dig for yourself. Um, so there's just a lot of information out there. Now, the truth is the Gospels were not written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And um, none of the synoptic Gospels name their Arthur or Arthurs. And... You know, it, it's kind of sad because how can the Catholic Church, the people that gave us this book, down through uh, Protestantism, how can they sit there and spew this lie out that these are the original people? And that when we get to church, they said Mark said this, Matthew said this, Mark will up with, with, you know, with Jesus and Matthew and all this kind of stuff. How can they say that, knowing these pastors know this? They have to know this kind of stuff. So, Christians believe, and I used to be one. I'm not religious. I'm not a Muslim. I don't practice Judaism. I'm not a Christian. I am a spiritual person, and I go with the spiritualism of Egypt because they alone are are the oldest, one of the oldest, besides Samaria, um, that are very spiritual. So I'm not a superstitious person. Um, I don't conjure up evil spirits. Um, I know who I am. I feel comfortable in my physical body. And um, there are things to help spirits which is internally um, whether it be um, good food good clean water good vitamins crystals sleep meditation i'm gonna do it so um i'm not an evil person um, i just speak the truth so the christians believe that the gospels were written by those whose names appear in the books most also believe that they are written in the same order as they appear in the Bible. And that is not true, my friends. They did that for a reason. Mark was the very first one. And if you read Mark first and don't read it second, you will see a whole total different Jesus take. See, the very beginning, the Mark is kind of like plain and kind of crazy. But as you go on to your time, it's making them more divine and more... Uh, Christ-like. Now, the truth is, all of the Arthur's names are sheer guesswork or pious frauds. 
The titles, according to Matthew, were not added until in the late second century, this Arthur says. Um, all four Gospels were originally anonymous. None claimed to be written by the eyewitnesses. And all contain giveaways that they were written generations later by well-educated Greek-speaking theologians, not illiterate Aramaic speakers. They are extant writings accredited to the Apostolic Fathers, Clement of Rome, Barnabas, Hermas, Ignatius, Polycarp, written for the most part early. These writings contain no mention of the four Gospels. This also is admitted by early Christian scholars, one of whom is Dr. Henry Dodwell, who wrote, We have at this day certain most authentic ecclesiastical writers of the time, as Clements Romanus, Barnabas, Hermas, Ignatius, and Polycarp, who wrote in the order wherein I have named them, and after all the writers in the New Testament, but in Hermas you will not find one passage or any mention of the New Testament, nor in all the rest is any one of the evangelists named. Dissertations upon Irenaeus by Henry Bodwell in 1689. So, in other words, the four Gospels were unknown to the early Christian fathers. And yes, dear tree seekers, it is so true because I have read some of these people's works as in Justin Martyr, the most eminent of the early fathers, wrote about the middle of the second century, his writings in proof of the divinity of Christ would have demanded the use of these gospels. Had they existed in his time, he makes more than 300 quotations from the books of the Old Testament and nearly 100 from the apocryphal books of the New Testament, but none from the four Gospels. The doctor and Reverend Giles says the very names of the evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are never mentioned by him. Quote, Justin, do not occur once in all his writings. And this was documented in the Christian records, page 71, by Dr. Reverend Giles. That's true, and Justin Martyr even said Jesus was as equivalent to Jupiter. Hmm. So that I'll tell you something, that they were making these things. How do y'all like my cowboy cup? <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Even though the Gospels go under the names, oh, I think I already wrote, okay, excuse me. Even the Gospels go under the names of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They were, in fact, written anonymously, as I said. These names first appeared in the second century and were assigned to the anonymous writings to give the writings apostolic authority. The Gospel of Mark was written before any other canonical Gospel, that canonical, canonical gospels and was written after the fall of the second temple which occurred in 70 CE so whose ever names are behind these little trickeries we will never know they do not purport to have been written by Matthew Mark Luke and John their titles do not affirm it they simply imply that they are according to the supposed teachings of these evangelists as Ren says they merely signify that these were the traditions preceding from each of these apostles and claiming their authority. Finally, recognition of authorship in mid second century. So, Theophilus, who wrote after the middle of the later half of the second century, mentions the Gospel of John. Irenaeus, who wrote a letter a little later, mentions all of the Gospels. So, Irenaeus, you dirty rat, in 180. makes numerous quotations from them in the latter half of the second century then between the time of Justin and Papias and the time of Theophilus and Irenaeus, the four gospels were undoubtedly written or compiled. So the gospel according to Mark is the most important of the synoptics because it is primary source for Matthew and Luke. And that is true. 
76% of Mark is reproduced almost word for word, both in Matthew and Luke. Additionally, 18% of Mark is reproduced in Matthew, but not in Luke. And further, 3% of Mark is in Luke, but not in Matthew. This means that 97% of Mark is reproduced in Matthew and Luke. That is true, my dear tree seekers, because when I was on my quest, I put all three of these books together, paragraph by paragraph, and I was like, this is the same damn thing. What in the hell is going on? So, so not even the Bible claims that Mark was an eyewitness to Jesus' ministry. Modern non-Christian biblical scholars believe that the Gospel of Mark was written in Syria by an unknown Christian no earlier than 70. Using various sources, including a passion narrative, collections of miracles, stories, apocalyptic traditions, and disputations, and sayings. These stories were in circulation year after year after year and told in different languages and in different countries from that of Jesus. That's it. The source for the Gospel of Mark is other people's stories and writings. In other words, all of Mark's sources were at best secondhand, more likely fifth or sixth. What happens to stories that circulate oral for years? Obviously, they come to change in a retelling. The apologists dismiss the charge of hearsay by pointing to the strength of the oral tradition. The simple childhood game of telephone is sufficient to illustrate that point that stories told mouth to mouth for 35 years can't possibly retain the original content. And by the end of the second century, the tradition of Matthew, the tax collector, had become widely accepted and the line, the gospel according to Matthew, began to be added to manuscripts. For many reasons, scholars today believe otherwise, 55% of the gospel is copied from Mark. They believe instead that it was written between 80 and 90 by a highly educated Jew, intimately familiar with the technical aspects of Jewish law standing on the boundary between traditional and non-traditional Jewish values. He wrote for a Jewish audience. Like Q&M, he stresses he, the continuing relevance of the Jewish law, and like Mark, he never bothers to explain Jewish customs. And then like Luke, who traces Jesus' ancestry back to Adam, father of the human race, he traces it only to Abraham, father of the Jews. The fact that the lineage differs significantly from that of Luke is a real problem for those who claim that the Holy Spirit's hand guided and lifted the writers of the gospel. Well, unlike most modern critical scholarship concludes that Luke used the gospel of Mark for his chronology and a hypothetical saying source Q document for many of Jesus' teaching, Luke may also draw from independent records. Traditional Christian scholarship has dated the composition of the gospel to the early 60s, while higher criticism dates it back to the later decades of the first century. While the traditional view that Paul's companion Luke authored the gospel is still often put forward a number of possible contradictions between Acts and Paul's letters lead many scholars to dispute this account. Now, John differs significantly from the synoptic gospels in the theme, content, time, duration, or of events, and style. The gospel of John reflects a Christian tradition that is different from that of the other gospels. It was rejected as heretical by many individuals and groups within the early Christian movement. It was used extensively by the Gnostic Christians. Dun, dun, dun! Yes, it's a very Gnostic book, my friend was ultimately accepted into the official canon over many objections. It is now the favorite gospel of many conservative Christians and the gospel least referred to by many liberal Christians. They have a totally different agenda in mind for their audience than did the authors of the synoptic gospels. The authors of the synoptic gospels were writing to their fellow Jews and trying to convince them that they could accept Jesus as the Messiah and still remain Jewish. Matthew even indicates that the men should still be circumcised. John's teaching, as summed up in John 3.16, are just the opposite of those writers of Mark, Matthew, and Luke. Whereas John welcomes anyone to the fold, Mark, Matthew, and Luke write for and the Jews only. They see Jesus as a Jewish Messiah who has come to return Israel to its former glory. 
gospel identifies this Arthur as a disciple whom Jesus loved. The text does not actually name this disciple, but by the beginning of the second century, tradition began to form which identified him with John the Apostle, one of the twelve innermost circle. Today, the majority of scholars do not believe that John or any other eyewitness wrote it and traced it instead to a Johannine community, which traces traditions to John. The gospel itself shows signs of having been composed in three layers, reaching its final form between 90 and 100. The bottom line, the canonical gospels upon which the Christian faith is built, the ones which present the words of Jesus are writings unknown, writing to the particular points they wish to make. The quotations allegedly from Jesus were most likely made up by the authors to support their positions. Correct, my dear truth seekers. Very correct. The titles in our English Bible are later editions, my friends. They are not original to the Gospels themselves. The Gospel narratives were always written in the third person. Go check your Bibles. The tradition that they were written by two disciples, Matthew and John, and by two companions of the Apostles, Mark and Luke, is first attested in the 2nd century. We can say certain for about the Arthurs is that they were all highly educated, dear friends, literate, Greek-speaking Christians, at least the second generation. Contrast this with the apostles of Jesus, who were uneducated, lower class, illiterate, Aramaic-speaking peasants. So if the Gospels had been written by the eyewitness apostles, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it is unlikely that they reported everything accurately. Remember that their testimony comes 30 years and 60 years after the fact. This would be eyewitness testimony at a minimum. Well, and the discrepancies in the Holy Spirit. Christians argue that the authors of the gospel, and in fact the authors of the books of the Bible, were guided by the Holy Spirit, breathed in like 1 Timothy, and therefore cannot be an error regardless of who wrote the words. We would like to throw out just a few of the discrepancies that one finds between the same story told by the different authors. For example, the accounts of Jesus' birth in Matthew and Luke are strikingly different. In addition to major discrepancies in Luke and Matthew's version, versions of the birth and his family's relocation from Bethlehem to Nazareth, there are historical problems. These include the nature of the miraculous star in Matthew that leads the wise men to the exact location of Jesus' birth, and the census in Luke that required knowing where one's ancestors were. Moreover, the census involved the entire Roman Empire, and there's no account of such a huge census anywhere except in Luke. John, by contrast, puts the temple incident very early in Jesus' ministry, has several trips to Jerusalem, and puts the crucifixion immediately before the Passover holiday, on the day when the lambs for the Passover meal were being sacrificed in the temple. And the accounts of Jesus' death in Mark and Luke are strikingly different. John has Jesus teaching for three years, Mark and Matthew only one year. So, lots to be said, and then you go into your encyclopedia. I mean, your Catholic encyclopedia and your Catholic dictionary, and they spout off lies, too. If you're questioning about these Gospels, or God spells, in other words, go to your Catholic encyclopedia, go to G, look for Gospels, and read all of that nasty stuff. And I think you'd might, you might want a Tom's or some nausea medicine by the time you get finished reading it like I did. And you will find all the nasty little lies and deceit and the trickery of the church. So, there again, my friends, I wanted to explain this today. And I'll clear up some questions and some madness today on my YouTube channel. So, as always, I love all my subscribers. Thank you to my new subscribers. And always remember, search the truth. And the truth shall set you free, my friends. Have a great evening and hope to see you soon. Goodbye.